Welcome to TV20 Classic Sports. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. From all-star matchups to championship games, we've reached into the vault to bring back a part of Cleveland history. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of TV20 Classic Sports. Welcome to Gordon Park for the Class Big F Championship here at Gordon Park between the Glenview Barons and the Low Park Senators. Today's game is brought to you by the Cleveland Baseball Federation in conjunction with the Cleveland Indians and the City of Cleveland Recreation Department. Hi again everybody, Adam Mendoza here at Gordon Park. This afternoon we have the Big F Championship between the Glenview Barons, the defending champions in the city of Cleveland. They will take on the Low Park Senators in what is going to be a very interesting matchup between two top flight teams. But first, before we get to all the action, let's toss it over to Tim Wells, who's talking with the coach from the Low Park Senators. Hey Adam, we're right over here on the third base side with the Low Park Centers coach, Rick Kinzel. Rick, first of all, let me congratulate your team on getting here. Low Park, we also know, is over by the old Brooklyn area, but the Senators. Tell us a little bit about your team. Well, we try to play smart baseball, not throw the ball around. Good pitching, good defense. We do have some hitting, but if we throw the ball around today and make errors, we're going to have a hard time. Let's talk about some of the exciting players on your team to watch. Well, our pitcher, Daryl Smigelski, does uh, the majority of our pitching. He's also a good catcher when he catches, good hitter. And Eddie, his brother, who's our catcher, very smart kid, tough for a 12-year-old. And Timmy Kinzel, another 12-year-old, hard-nosed player, leads off. He's pretty quick, too, steals a lot of bases. Obviously, first time in a championship game. A lot of young kids coming in here, but a lot of confidence in them. Obviously, what did you tell them before the ball game? I just told them to go out and have fun. This is something they're going to remember the rest of their lives, win or lose. And whether they win or lose, they're still going to go home, play their Nintendo, and go to bed tonight. They just might be in a better mood if they win, that's all. Okay, we want to wish you good luck. Okay, let's go over to Adam, who will be with the defending champs, the Glenview coach, Greg McIntosh. Adam? And welcome again, Adam Mendoza, along with the coach for the Glenview Barons, uh, Greg McIntosh. Greg, this is the second time you've been here for the championship last year. Uh, you guys won the city championship. This year, 9-3, and three, but a lot of your games, you guys have had to really come back and battle to get some wins this year. Yeah, we got a real tough team this year. They had to come back from about seven, eight games this year. But we got a tough bunch, so they can do it. Now, this is a team that is coming back with some familiar names, especially your pitcher, William Hubb, who really was the star last year. And also, he got you that championship last year. Yeah, he had a big hit drop right out here in right field, the same spot. But this year, he playing a different role as the pitcher, coming in, the showstopper, bring a little heat, a little bit of mixture of pitches, and he also do a good job with the bat. Now, when you look at this team this year and compare it to last year's team, what do you see as the differences between these young kids? Uh, this year's team is more speed. You know, we, we more on the bases, we're quicker on the bases. We're not as much power as last year, but we maneuver on the bases pretty well, and we like a high-scoring game. More or less last year was more low-scoring. Now, this year, when you look at your team, what are you hoping for them to do on the field defensively? I know the big concern for a lot of coaches in the league is cut down on the mental errors. Oh, yeah, we got to gotta make an out and out. Three outs, it has to be in, and that's it. Um, outfield, what I'm most concerned about. We have to stop the ball in the outfield. Don't let it get through your legs because you see a bigger field to turn the double. My infield is pretty solid, but overall defense, I think we're going to be okay. And I think a lot of folks today, they're going to be uh, entertained by both of these two teams, and uh, the low park team is no slouch. I mean, to get to the championship, you also have to be a very good what are you are telling your kids about this low park team and what they have to do to win? I'm telling them I know they're a pretty tough team and they must be pretty good defensively because I've seen they had low scoring games. So we really have to hit the ball pretty hard and play smart because if we outthink ourselves, then we can't beat anybody. Well, thinking that's going to be the key in today's game. A lot of mental thinking out there. The team that can uh, ill afford a lot of errors, that's going to be the key in today's game. Let's toss it over for the player introductions after this. Not boiling. Adam. <laughs> Adam. I won't say anything. <laughs> and welcome back to Gordon Park with the class Big F Championship. Let's take it over to Leo Safeli with the player introductions for our Big F Championship game. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to Gordon Park and to our 1998 Big F Cleveland Baseball Federation Championships. This evening, we'd like to introduce the squads of both teams. First, the visitors this evening. The visitors, the Glenview Black Barons. First for Glenview, number one, James Cowan. Number two, Rennell, Rennell Bradley. Number three, Deshaun Curry. Number four, Daryl Washington. Number six, William Hub. Number seven, Shelby Gardner. Number eight, Jamal Edwards. Number nine, Charles Cunningham. Number 10, Gregory Wolford. Number 11, Darnell Washington. Number 12, Tristan Taylor. Number 13, Navi Abdurahi. And number 14, Daryl Forrest. Assistant coaches, Mr. Greg McIntosh, Sr. Head coach, Mr. Greg McIntosh, Jr. And Mr. Roosevelt Kirby. Now introducing our home team this evening, the Low Park Oval Senators. Number one, Eddie Smigelski. Number two, Anthony Minnett. Number three, James Metz. Number five, Anthony Peters. Number six, Daryl Spigelski. Number seven, Tyler Tapina. Number eight, Tim Kinzel. Number nine, Frank Bazaris. Number 10, Jason Dillon. Number 11, John McNamara. Number 12, Robert Colley. And number 14, Adam Watsowitz. Assistant coach of the Low Park Ball Senators, Mr. Al Tapina. Head coach, Mr. Rick Kinzel. I'd like you all to please stand and join Mr. Rocco Scotty tonight's presentation of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang and the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say This class Big F championship right after this timeout. You're watching CLV TV 35.
On the pitching mount, Mr. Dick Hyland, Secretary of the Cleveland Baseball Federation, doing our ceremonial pitching. Welcome to Gordon Park. We're going to look at the two umpires that are going to be calling today's game. On your left is Ron Hubini. He's a 20-year umpire, a graduate of East High, where he's played some baseball and softball in the Cleveland Sandlots himself. Currently works at the City of Cleveland Heights Water Department. And on the bases to his right is John Alexander. Nine years he's been calling baseball and softball. He's a graduate of Tom Edison High School. And folks, let me tell you, he's done it all. He's tried out with the tribe. He even played a little football and baseball with Bob Feller Jr. over at Woodhill Park. Again, he works for the city of Cleveland as a foreman operator in the water pollution control and does some officiating on the football field. Two outstanding officials will call today's game. Absolutely, and in this game uh, here at, the, today on the, at the Gordon Park between the Glenview Barons and the Low Park Senators, the Glenview Barons are the defending champions at uh, nine and three. They beat Sterling to get to this championship game, 13 to seven. Meanwhile, the Low Park Senators at 10 and two beat Clark Rec, eight to six, and uh, really a very interesting matchup in this ball game, Tim. You know, when you look at these two teams, you're coming in here with a veteran team. The Lobark team today. is a little bit younger, Adam, but they've been in some Old tough games field. and they've got an outstanding Eddie pitcher that's going here today. Eight. One of the Eight. things, Number folks, eight. you're going to remember is last year, William Eddie. Hub. Eddie. Sounds familiar? Eddie. Big hit Eddie. in the ball game. He, he had it with Eddie. two outs Eddie. in the seventh Eddie. inning Eddie. to give Eddie. Glenview Eddie. the championship. We could be looking at that type Eddie. of game Four. here today at Gordon nine. Park. And right. when I talked to the coach, Greg McIntosh Jr., he said his role has changed a bit. He will be more concentration as a pitcher. But when you look at this Glenview Barron team, they want to do a lot of smart base running and play very good defense on the team. But when you take a look at some of their players, Greg Willard and William Hub, those are the two big names for this Glenview Barron's team. But meanwhile, you look on the other side of the ledger for Low Park, uh, you look at what they have, the, the Smigelski brothers, Daryl and Eddie, and then Timmy Kinzel, the son of the coach, those are three good players for this low park team. Number six, Daryl Smigelski. And you're right, Adam, when you look at those those kids, you know, one of the things Rick Kinzel, I've known him for a long, long time, and Rick is the guy who keeps everything in perspective with the kids. He's going to let them go out and have some fun. He's going to keep them to realize that, hey, you know, like he told us before the ball game, you know what, guys, this is something you'll remember for a long, long time. Go out and enjoy it. And Adam, when you look at these coaches, I mean, you're talking two decent coaches. Yeah, Greg McIntosh, this is no unfamiliar place for him. He's been there before last year as a coach of this team. He's only 19 years old, really, a young kid, but he is also trying to give his experiences of what he knows about the game. And he's had a championship game uh, two years in a row to take his team to. And when you look on the other side to Low Park, I mean, James Rhodes High School, one of our favorites that we know, and your old stomping grounds when we started class up years ago, Seven. Low Park, Rick Kinzel, 77, graduate of James Ford Rhodes. He's been coaching youth baseball for nearly 16, 17 years now. Played some baseball over. To, he plays also in Class F. So he knows what it is to go out here. As we look at the first pitch of today's ball game from the Low Park pitcher, Daryl Smigelski. Smigelski at 5 0 oh with a 1.25 ERA. This one's grounded inside the bag. Fair ball by Greg Willard. He's going to turn the bag and head the two. He's going to look to go to third base. He's got third easily. He's going to come around and score on the home run as he lines one down the first baseline. So, right off the bat, Greg Willard who is hitting 306, comes in with the home run for the ball game for the Glenview Barons, and they take a quick one to nothing lead. Center fielder, number 11, 
There you see the replay. It just went over the first baseman's head and then just took off down the line. And Willard had all the afterburners going as it just kept going and going and going, just like the Energizer Bunny. That ball kept rolling, and so did Willard. He kept rolling around the bases for the home run. Showed some good speed there, Adam, as, as well as they were playing him to pull, that he would actually pull the ball, and he ends up hitting one. Of the, really, it's a bad hop that ended up going over to first baseman's head. Here's the pitch to Darnell Washington, back to Smigelski, who throws it over to Metz for the first out. Now, here comes the hitting hero of last year's championship game, William Hub, right-handed pitcher, 5'9", 134 pounds, coming into this game with a 457 average. And on the base paths, he is perfect. As the pitch from Daryl Smigelski to his brother, Eddie Smigelski, goes for a ball. There you see Smigelski looking it inside, brings in a curveball. That's struck for a strike, one and one on the count. There you see the helmet cam. There's a row cam, the mini cam. Take a look at it. Pitch on the inside part from Smigelski. He is really fired up right now. A bit angry after that first run. Has a one and two count on the batter. This one's bounced foul down the first base side. William Hub, as we talked about this year, 457 hitter, ninth grader out of Collinwood. Again, they're shagging another ball into the field. Actually went foul. And uh, you watched our CLV TV 35 camera crew. Guy over at the first base side had to do a little dodging of the foul ball. William Hub, there you see our cameraman over there on the first is. base side. Giving us a wave. Hub, the right-handed hitter, takes this one inside for a ball. Count goes to two and two. Chris Smigelski, who's 40 strikeouts this year and eight walks in 34 innings. This one's pounded to the second baseman. Kinzo gets it, tosses it over to James Metz for the second out. And what we've seen so far is that the Glenview Barons, Tim, they have not been able to put the ball up in the air. The ball is coming in high where they're pounding it into the dirt. What I'm impressed with Smigelski early is that he throws strikes. Nabir Abdurrahim is up at the plate now. Rahim Abdurrahim is uh, hitting 500 on the year, third baseman for this Barons club. Smigelski throws it in, strike right down the pipe. Smigelski, workmanlike in this first inning, no score, or one to nothing is our score on the first hit of the game. Gets a big swing and a miss for a strikeout as we end the top half of the first inning with one run on one hit as the Barons take a one nothing lead into this bottom half of the first inning as Tim, we now take a look at the hitting lineup for this Low Park Senators. Hitting in the top spot will be Timmy Kinzel at second base. Ed Smigelski, the catcher, is hitting second. Daryl Smigelski will be pitching and hitting third. Frank Belzars will be the third baseman, hitting in the fourth slot. Tony Minnett will be the shortstop, hitting fifth. James Metz at first base, hitting sixth. Robert Colley in right field, followed by Tyler Tapania and Jason Dillon. And, Tim, you've got the defensive setup for the Glenview Black Barons. Well, when you look in the infield going from first to third, at first base, it's Tristan Taylor. Daryl Force at second. Greg Woolard, he's got a lot of great range at short. And Nabi Abdurrahman, we've seen him before at third base with a strong arm. When you look in the outfield from left to right, you got a quick outfielder in left with Daryl Washington, but a lot more speed in center with Darnell Washington and Ryan Bradley in right. Behind the plate is Shelby Gardner. He's got a strong arm. He calls a great game. And on the mound at 5'9", 134 pounds, William Hub comes in at 7-1 with 40 strikeouts and only 10 walks and a great ERA of two point. And that is in 57 innings pitched as it is a beautiful evening here at Gordon Park. There you see the Great Lake, Lake Erie here. What a background here in the city of Cleveland at one of the parks here. And what a night for baseball. 
Temperatures have cooled off as the day progressed, but still a bit uh, humid. And we've talked about the heat, Tim, being a factor in this ball game, and I'm sure it will be a factor once again. Absolutely, and it's really been a, a great day here at Gordon Park. When you talked about earlier today, Adam, we had the uh, Little F Championships, and, and now the, the Big F, it seems like the sun's come down, the lights have gone on, and it's just the start of a great evening. Great day for baseball. One announcer used to say, beautiful night for baseball. And, was, uh, you know, when you look at it, it's just the... Uh, you're looking at the cream of the crop in the city of Cleveland and in the Class F program. And now we're going to have to keep my enthusiasm down for this second game because, you know, I have that, that little heartfelt feelings for this low park team because uh, growing up way back when, that's who I played for, Mr. Eugene Duke. Yeah, and we're hoping to get him over here to, during the game just to kind of chat and see how things have gone. And, and he is really kind of one of those people in the community that, that really had a commitment to the city of Cleveland and the kids over at Old Brooklyn to put a baseball program together. The Old Ball Baseball League started back on May 30th in 1995. It was a dream of many residents and it really started in the community. Over 500 kids now play in that program which has helped sponsored through the Cleveland Baseball Fish. They assist their league as well. And one thing is when I grew up and played there we had two ball fields. Now there's I think at least six that are there over at Low Park. Oh, William Hub, the pitcher, getting ready as he throws to Timmy Kinzel, who fouls this one off down the third baseline. And for Kinzel, the seventh grader out of St. Leo's, hitting 444 on the year. Nine stolen bases during the Big F All-Star game. He's a good contact hitter. A jokester, too, keeps the team pretty loose inside the bench area. William Hub, the pitcher, at five foot nine, brings it in. Kinzel lines one down the third baseline for the base hit. Underneath the third baseman's legs, that was Abra Durahim. And Kinzel now on the overthrow is gonna head off to second base and he may look for third base as he makes the turn. He hustles, he's going, no throw. He slides, he's in there safely. So Kinzel gets in there on the single and a couple of errors and he is all the way to third base as Ed Smigelski now comes up to the plate. And for Smigelski, a seventh grader out of Our Lady of Good Counsel, 444 hitter, good contact hitter as well. As we look at the replays, the ball went past the first baseman, Tristan Taylor. And Taylor had to go chasing far for it. And one of the things that Greg McIntosh said was that we can't throw the ball around against the better teams. And this team has a tendency to do that, and that was one of his concerns. There is leading off here in this Big F championship. The bunt laid down perfectly. Here comes the play at the plate. No play at all as the third baseman, Abdurrahim, let the ball go. And a perfect sacrifice bunt there by Eddie Smigelski. And this game is tied at one. One of the things, Adam, that Rick told me before the ball game, I says, can this team manufacture runs? He said, we're going to have to go out and be aggressive and manufacture. We're not the type that's going to sit back and just hit it over the fence. We've got to create havoc. And right there, the suicide squeeze right here in the first inning. Daryl Smigelski, the pitcher now. Here comes the steal. The throw down, not in time as Eddie Smigelski takes a stolen base. He is now at second. Daryl Smigelski up at the plate. Ninth grader, Holy Name High School. 600 hitter. Had two doubles and four RBIs in the last playoff game. Has three home runs this year as William Hub looks back over to second base. And Eddie Smigelski. And that is what Low Park is going to try to do. Manufacture runs as much as possible. The pitch, a big swing and a miss there by Daryl Smigelski. Daryl at five foot five, 125 pounds. Six years experience in the Cleveland Baseball Federation program. We're looking at him over ninth grader at Holy Name. Comes in with an honor roll student. This one's fouled off in the back and out of play as he got a bit underneath it. There you see his brother Ed Smigelski at second. There's Darrell, the right-handed hitter. In this big F championship game here on CLV TV 35. William Hub looking down for the sign. 
Outfield playing straight away. Pitches high and inside for a ball, and it is a full count now. William Hub finding himself in a bit of trouble right now. Infield playing normal depth. Hub's pitch comes in on the outside part of the play, just missing. And now the it's Low Park the Senators have it with Tim Wells, runners at first and second as Daryl Smigelski takes the walk. Hey, we're right over here on the position. third base side Friday. with the Low Park Senators coach, Rick Kinzo. Rick, first Bazaris. of all, let me congratulate your Frank team. Frank Bezeris now coming up to the plate. Also know is over by the Yo, third Brooklyn baseman area, hitting 5-15. Ball gets away from the catcher. Here it comes the play to third base. Ball. Not in time as Smigelski goes over. And now we have runners at first and second. On the ball to Bazaris. Number 12, Tristan Taylor. Bazaris, a good hitter, rarely strikes out. Number 13, Navi. One of four pitchers on this low park staff. Hubs pitch inside. And Smigelski goes over on the steal. And now we have runners at second and third. So Bazaar's with two runners out on second and third. Pitch on the inside part of the plate. And it goes behind the catcher as it gets away. And this is what the Shelby Gardner is going to have to really watch out is keeping the ball in front of him. There you see the view from our home plate umpire as the pitch comes right into your living room. Ball's on the inside part. That is ball four, and William Hub is finding some trouble finding the plate as he walks the bases loaded right now. And that brings up the shortstop for the Low Park Senators. Tony Minnick. Tony Minnick coming up, ball on the outside part of the plate once again. And Tim, as you look at the location of where William Hub has been throwing it, he's trying to hit that outside corner and he's going way outside. He's trying, he's trying to overcompensate right now. Hub looking with frustration now out on the mound. The bases are loaded for Frank, or for Anthony Minnick, who is an eighth grader at Our Lady of Good Counsel. And he is just letting and looking the pitches to go in. And you know, if you're a coach, you say, Wait till he throws a strike. Absolutely, and I'm sure Rick has got the take on until, until they see one. There it is. There you go. Right now, a strike there by William Hub. 2.0 ERA on the season. 57 innings pitched. 40 strikeouts, 10 walks. That one's low for a walk as he walks one in. So Tony Minnick gets an RBI on the walk. Everybody advances as they do a dance around the square. And right now that brings up to the plate James Metz. Number three. Metz, an eighth grader out of St. Mary's, the first baseman hitting 325. Another good hitter on this low park senator team. Kenny Lofton, favorite Indian. William Hub trying to find the plate right now. Missing it on the outside part of the plate. I think there you saw the catcher, Shelby Gardner, trying to really help him out with trying to move the ball inside after he catches it. Now, when you look at the catcher, and I'm going to point something out here, you're going to see, see how he's kind of shifted outside? you got to help your, you got to help your uh, pitcher. When you see that your pitcher is consistently outside, you want to shift inside. Move your body inside so it gives him a bigger target inside. That pitch high and inside for a strike on the swing. Just like the young man that fields a ground ball and he throws it in the dirt to the first base. My question is, where was the target from the first baseman? You got it. You're always going to throw to a glove. The strikeout as Metz goes down swinging on a high fastball by William Hub, and that brings up Robert Colley. Number 12, Robert Colley. Colley coming into this game, hitting 272. <laughs> Scored twice during the playoffs, and the bases are loaded. Colley takes one for a strike. Colley, an eighth grader out of St. Leo's, grade school. Here comes the pitch from Hub. Big swing and a miss. That time you saw he stepped in the bucket and turned his head. You always want to keep see the ball at the front eye. 
Colley looking with two strikes. Ball's on the inside part of the plate. Here comes Smigelski to the plate. He's going to score easily. So Darryl Smigelski gets in on the pass ball, and Low Park leads three to nothing as the runners advance. So now Robert Colley has runners at second and third, and Low Park has taken a three to nothing lead. Strike there hmm. by Hub. Hmm. <laughs> I refuse to say anything on the grounds of me. <laughs> Oh, right there, another one for strike three. That was a great, great pitch. Two straight strikeouts for William Hub. I used to tell players that played for me, when you get into this situation of second and third, bases loaded, you got to want the bat. You got to want to say, let me give me, give me the bat. I want to go up there and hit one. Let me drive in a run here. Ball gets thrown away to Abdur Rahim. Here comes one run. Here comes a second run to the plate. And it's five to nothing, Low Park. On an error by William Hub and not here, Abdur Rahim. For Low Park in the bottom of the first inning, five runs. And that'll be it in the bottom of the first inning as they score five runs in this first inning. Five run rule in the first inning. So the five run rule is in effect as we now head to the bottom of the first inning and Low Park with a five to nothing lead as we take a look at the Glenview Barons hitting lineup uh, going into this second inning. It will be Daryl Washington, Daryl Forrest, and Tristan Taylor, the middle of the order for the Glenview Barons. And as we look at the field for the Low Park Senators, Tim, let's look at them, how they are set up defensively. Well, when you look at him from first to third, it's James Metz at first base. Timmy Kinzel at second base. We saw him field one during the first inning. Anthony Minnett, they call him Tony because he's got a nice arm. He's very consistent and steady. And Frank Bizarre is over at third base. In the outfield, from left to right, Daniel Stanley in left, Tyler Toppany in center, and Jay, uh, Robert Colley in right. And we've got the brothers as a battery. Eddie Smigelski is behind the plate, catching his brother Darrell, who comes in at 5-0. and 40 Ks only walked eight all year in 34 innings for a 1.25 earn run average. Well, Darrell Forrest, Tristan Taylor, and Shelby Gardner, or Washington Forrest and Taylor, that is the batters in the order for the Glenview Barons, who find themselves in a bit of a hole, Tim, at five to nothing. Lots of errors in that top half of the first inning. And a lot of the viewers might be at home wondering, well, how did they end the inning with five runs? Number four, Daryl Washington. Our run spread rule is set up in a way that for the first four innings, if any team scores five runs in an inning before giving up three outs, the inning's over. And what that does is enable teams from getting clobbered early and keeping self-confidence. Washington grounds it out to Smigelski, who throws it over the Mets for the out. And you know what I've been impressed about so far with Smigelski, all his pitches, Glenview's getting around and hitting him, but it's into the ground once again. And there you see the play as Smigelski makes a nice pitch and just tosses it over easily over to first base. A lot he of is, poise, he, Dan. A lot of ground outs. Lots of ground outs in this game for Smigelski. Did that ball come through Next here? one for the TV booth. Where's my net? Give that right guy, through the fence. Give that guy a hit. Now look at that, Adam. I don't know if, Hank, we can get a picture of this. But this is the ball that almost hit us. <laughs> and I'm going to hold this here, Hank, until you come back here and show him. Smargelski's pitch. This one's fouled into the net behind us. Hank, you see this right here? This ball? This is the one that almost hit us. And we're going to hold on to this until they need it. <laughs> Another there one. It is. Right here. That's supposed to be out there. Here, Junior. <laughs> give it to him. Thought we were supposed to be safe back here, Adam. I thought so, too. My playing days are over. <laughs> Daryl Forrest, the second baseman, is up to the plate. Forrest, a 5'15 hitter, hits this one up in the air, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. 
That's one of those Texas leaguers that had seeing eyes and found a lot of green in the outfield. Number seven batter. First baseman number 12, Kristen Taylor. Got some information uh, trying to get it by. Uh, hey, Paul, how was Tim's career over at Padua when he played? <laughs> Terrific, they say. <laughs> I should know that they would be out here. <laughs> Stolen base, Adam, for Daryl Forrest. And both teams have the same style. When they get on the bases, they're going to run. Now Tim's getting all serious on me. <laughs> I have to because I can't talk about my career. That's one of the things that we love. Doing. Tim, you know, when you and I do these games, we have so much fun together. I know. You guys just <laughs> love talking about baseball. It's, an Ameri it's American as apple pie. And then just trying to find out about Tim's career. You know, he coached at St. Boniface High School or St. Boniface Grade School. Coached for Dre Schrader. Dre Schrader Company. Police athletically. Had a lot of, Larry Gagnon was one of probably the finest sponsors I ever had. He, you know, he just basically gave us total support and go out there and do your thing. And you had a lot of great players that have come through the ranks and played for you. Smigelski gets the ball, throws it over to third. They tag him out at third as Darryl Forrest is cut down, going to third on a great play by Smigelski as Darryl Smigelski throws it over to Frank Bizarris for the second out. Now you watch this play here, and you always tell him to make sure the ball goes through. Now you're gonna see, he grounds this ball right back to the pin. Now look, Miguel, the first thing he does is look, he steps and throws, and watch the tag. Great job on a tag by the third baseman. Frank Bezeras there on the tag, now up to the plate. Shelby Gardner, the catcher. Smigelski, this one's popped up. Down the line, will it go foul? And it does into the stands. Heads up, folks. And I'm impressed by Daryl and his pitching. And as we've seen, not many balls going up in the air. One in fair play, a, a couple in foul territory, but the rest have just been pounded into the ground. Smigelski, as we said, the 1.25 ERA. What impresses me is his poise. He's in command out there all the time. Balls in for a ball and a stolen base now by Tristan Taylor. Now, everybody that's watching this ball game will say this guy's got great speed, and I'm not taking nothing away from him. He probably does. But, folks, how many times have he thrown over to first base? None, not, so, not whatsoever. This one's grounded into the dirt. Smigelski picks it up. The throw to first, and they get him. Smigelski gets him down. Doesn't give up a run as Shelby Gardner goes down, and... Tim, what's interesting, out of the three outs, Four, two one, of them two, have been in no runs, on the ground. No there runs one on hit one hit. No well, you look at it here. He circles the ball. Again, keeps his body from steps and throw. Good target by the first baseman. Nice stretch. Good job all the way around. So we've played to the top of the second half inning. And as we go into the bottom half of the second inning, the Low Park Senators lead it 5-1. to one. Let's toss it over to Tim Wells, who has a very special guest with him, legendary Indians broadcaster, Herb Score. Tim? Thanks, Adam. Very special guest, commissioner of Class F Baseball. And we talk about Class F, we talk about youth, and a person that's commit committed to the youth of the city of Cleveland playing baseball, Herb Score, welcome. Thank you very much. Herb, obviously, when you look at the youth baseball in the city of Cleveland, your vision and what you actually see going on well, today. I think what happened is, is happening in youth baseball. There's a lot more competing uh, now for, you know, they talk about baseball not being as popular. I think it's as popular, but I think there's more things to do and youngsters really have to have a, uh, have a choice. And uh, I think the unfortunate thing that we see uh, so often is fields that go unused. And that's, uh, you, want, you want to see them filled with bodies. Obviously, you know, being involved with Major League Baseball and seeing them involved in the community with the kids, 
the role in, in what you see what actually is taking place here in Cleveland? Well, I think the Cleveland Baseball Federation has done a great job uh, uh, because they, they allow the kids to play. And I think the one thing you got to do uh, with the youngsters is, is, is tr not try to coach them too much. Let them have fun. It, you know, it should be a fun time for them. I think that sometimes we uh, overemphasize the, uh, the practices. They have to be at a certain place at a certain time. And it's tough on them. Uh, but I think that the basic uh, thing is that you want the kids to have fun and be safe doing it. Okay, we talk about coaches. A lot of the people that are here, it's probably their first time coaching. It might be mom and dad that got hooked into it, you know. What advice would you give to a, a person that's just beginning coaching? Well, I think that uh, too many times uh, we, we try to teach the kids too much. Uh, uh, you know, you watch the big leaguers and watch them from the minor leagues up. Uh, they don't, uh, they don't overcoach. They they let they take they let the kids use their natural ability. And I think the basic thing is to uh, teach them the rules. Uh, you know, no, you know, you watch the a million different stances. There's no one way to tell a kid to hit. No one way to tell them how to pitch. But to basically, just let them go out and play the game. And uh, I think the other other thing they should do is make sure the kids get to play all the different positions. Uh, some kids say, "Oh, I don't want to be a pitcher," but. Maybe two or three years down the road, I said, boy, I like the pitch. You know, I like to be a second baseman. Uh, let them play all the positions. And it's a great theory. And obviously, you've seen it all. Last comment, for the moms and dads that are out there, what advice would you give them? Well, I, I think that uh, we have so much emphasis on winning. And winning is important. Winning is, uh, you know, that's, that's why you play games, is, is to be a winner. But uh, the thing is that everybody's not going to be winning. You're going to lose. And when the kid uh, strikes out with the bases loaded, <laughs> don't kick him in the pants uh, or not talk to him. We don't give him dinner because it happens in the big leagues and nobody says a word. Okay. Thanks for coming by, and thank you for your support of the Cleveland Baseball Federation. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back more to the Class F action. And welcome back to Gordon Park. Five to one as we head to the bottom of the second inning. The Low Park Senators leading it over the Glenview Barons. Good crowd on hand here on this warm summer evening here in Cleveland as the folks enjoying Gordon Park for this class Big F championship between the Low Park Senators and the Glenview Black Barons. The Glenview Black Barons finding themselves down five to one. They had the early lead at one to nothing on Greg Willett's home run in the first inning. But uh, after that, the Low Park Senators came back and scored five runs in the first inning on one base hit and a couple of errors. So right now, William Hub trying to get things back in order for the Glenview Barons as the folks just soaking up the sun here at Gordon Park. What a way to end the summer here in the city of Cleveland with the Class F Championship. The now, as we head towards the bottom of the second Tyler inning, seven, Tyler Tapania is the batter for the Low Park Senators. And Tapania, 303 hitter, the lefty, takes one for a strike on the outside part of the plate. Tapania can bunt and a utility player, very smart player as well, according to his coaches. Tapania takes one for a ball, one and one count. William Hub looking to really change things up in this second inning. Three and zero oh is the count to Tapania. The pitch from Hub for a ball, and he takes a walk. And Hub now finding uh, problems with locating the plate once again as another walk. Fourth Let's walk nine, of the ball game. Left fielder, number 10, Jason Dillon. Jason Dillon, the left fielder, coming up, the right-hander with a man on first. First pitch for a strike. Another ball. Runner goes, and he's safe at second, and joining us is Eugene Duke, who I played for many, many years ago at Low Park when really there was only two baseball fields there. And Eugene, it is great to have you here uh, at this championship game as, as Low Park is in the championship game against uh, this Black, uh, the Glenview Black Barons. Well, it's great to have them here again. On the, you know, well, we finished up late in the season for the Little F. We, uh, we didn't have a winner yet to enter in the 
a contest here, I mean, in a tournament, but the uh, Senators, they won, uh, I think, uh, all, all their games, so they were, there was no uh, right. dispute about who's going to win the division, Kingo. so that's why we got them here. Eugene, I know when I grew up and playing for you, you used to have your car, you used to drag the field yourself, and but you look at how low park is. We went from two fields now, there are at least six or seven fields well, yeah, over yes. at that facility now. I, I owe that to Councilman uh, Barb Pringle when she was in office, you know, and uh, I forget all the names down at City Hall that helped uh, out uh, to get the grant money and whatever we needed to get it started. Uh, and, and this next year, they're starting in August to renovate Oak Park uh, uh, Diamonds there. Uh, I think they're pay uh, spending like over $442,000 to renovate the place and putting us more fields in there. And uh, it, they're going to make a track, I guess, and landscape it, a new parking lot. And it's going to be really nice, a nice place for the kids to play. You, watch you, watch you, this, Adam, right here. Take a look. I think we got a cameraman. <laughs> We've been working on it all day. <laughs> Eugene, you've seen a lot of kids come through the programs throughout the years, and you just have to be proud of a lot of the talent that has come out of the old Brooklyn area. You know, they think I'm such a good coach, but it, they can make you be a good coach because you put the talent out in the field, and they, and they make you look great. That The talent is there. I mean, you just have to be there for them. I mean, you know, if you tell the kids a certain time that you're going to be there for practice or for a game, it's important for the coach to uh, show up. Eugene, when you think about class stuff and you go back, Obviously, we lost a very dear friend on the sand lines, Chuck Rosansky. Oh, yes. I remember Chuck was a big part of you getting involved. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, Chuck Rosansky, he was my first supervisor when I first started out. I guess I was a thorn in his side, and, and I kept complaining. And he says, you think you could do better? I says, yeah, and I've been there ever since, you know. And uh, the late uh, Commissioner Nagy, he called me and Chuck Rosansky troublemakers. And I says, well, if asking for good fields and good equipment and good baseballs, is a troublemaker that indeed that's what I am and well we got our good fields we got our baseball equipment from the CBF and uh, the kids really are enjoying uh, the effects on those days. Well here's a base hit into the outfield that's going to score another one on the single getting by the second baseman he's trapped he goes in he slides he beats the throw as Low Park now takes a six to one lead here in the second inning and, and Eugene one thing I have to say that you have been one of those you know we've talked about all the people that are dedicating themselves to the kids and the program in the city of Cleveland you are truly one of those uh, people Richard. that have has Number given six. your all for Down. so many years to the youth in the old Brooklyn area I myself is one of your former players uh, I just want to wish my thanks to you because you know you taught us more than just playing baseball you taught us to be good people and uh, a lot of us did turn out to be good kids uh, even going on to play as we got older right well sometimes no matter what you do you always have a few kids that go bad but if you just save one kid because you were there for him in baseball it, it's worth a program I mean and uh, it was a lot of fun down through the years I started out because I had four boys uh, and that was uh, in my family and three girls so I was with them with baseball and I wanted to quit after my sons graduated and went uh, to high school and them, but these kids kept coming back and wanting me to uh, help coach them because I could do it in the mornings. Uh, well, this one's another shot. This is going into the gap as Schmigelski rips one in the right center. That's going to go to the fence and he's going to go in for a double and that scores another one. Talk about Daryl Schmigelski. They've been talking about hitting the ball and through it. We saw right here why he had two doubles and four RBIs before. This time he crushes one in the right center. You're going to see he turns on the inside, comes to the outside corner, which really we want to hit the inside corner. But he'll go in in the second base with another double in a big championship game here at Gordon Park. Well, Eugene, we'd like to thank you for stopping by and talking with us and continued great success over in the old Brooklyn area over at Low Park. Okay, there's one more thing I'd like to say before I, I leave, and that Tim and I go way back, and uh, years ago, uh, kids didn't get the chance to play under the lights, and uh, at the end of the season, Tim and I would get together and we, we'd play a game at the end of the season at uh, Brookside One, the old historic field, and the kids really remember, remember it today that they played under the lights, I mean, and that was a real thrill. He won a few games, we won a few games, so <laughs> I think we still have to play a rub-off game because we're <laughs> <laughs> Let's get all the old kids from when we played and right. we'll get out there and have we like had, an old-timers game. We had some good team, like you said before, the talent was there, and uh, it did 
didn't need too much coaching. All right, thank but you very nice, much. It's nice of guys like you to come up and remember me. You guys changed in your appearance and everything, and I, I couldn't recognize you, but the names are always there and they're familiar, and I remember most of you guys. I, mean, I still have all the trophies that you guys won, and uh, you're on a mantle, and someday I'll dedicate them to CBF. They can have them downtown in, in their office. All right, thank you very much, Eugene. Thanks for coming by. Alrighty. Thank you. Eugene Duke over at Low Park, a longtime fixture with Low Park as the Low Park Senators get two runs in that last inning and they lead it 7-1. to one. Tim, you had heart. You had the kids playing under the lights at the end of the season. Well, it was always a dream. You know, I always felt that, that it was an opportunity for the parents to come out and see the kids play and to play under the lights was probably a thrill that I think Eugene and I carried on for a long time. Uh, I think it is important. You look at, like Joe had mentioned, you know, Joe Wise had mentioned earlier today that, you know, baseball in the city has changed. You know, we started out years ago and it hit a deep valley, but the last four years, everybody's playing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that you can give a lot of credit to the Cleveland Indians and their popularity and their resurgence as a baseball team in the major league level. And that filters down because that kids that gets kids to be interested into playing baseball. They'll be the ones. They get up at 9 o'clock in the morning. They put their bat on their bike and their glove. They head off to the park and the next thing you know, they won't come back till 6 o'clock because they're playing baseball all day long. And you, you don't... There was a time where you really never saw that anymore. I mean, I used to get up early, play baseball all day. Now you see the kids doing it once again. They're really getting into the game of baseball. And then with the Cleveland Baseball Federation and the Class F program still there for the kids, you know, look at how it's changed. I mean, I remember playing with just a, you know, all we got was a T-shirt. Now the kids are in full uniforms. Things have changed throughout the years, and the kids are responding. More kids than ever playing in all these leagues. You talked about uh, over at Luke Easter Park, the number of teams they have there. Over at Low Park, the number of teams. All these little facilities have so many kids that are playing that just makes for a lot of participation in the city of Cleveland. Absolutely, Adam. And the ones that are just watching CLV TV 35, you are watching the Big F City Championship, ages 13 and 14. The two finalists up at plate is the Glenview Black Barons. And in the field is the Low Park Senators. And the Low Park Senators have a 7-1 to one lead. Rynell Bradley, the right fielder, is up to the plate. And for Bradley, hitting 323, 10 for 31 as he takes a strike. Two strikes on him. And there you get the look once again from our mass cam. As the pitch comes right into your living room. That one just missing on the outside part of the plate. Full count to Rynell Bradley. Bradley, a right-handed hitter, pretty squared away. Daryl Smigelski fires that one in. That one's low for a ball. Fire attention. For Low Park, now batting in the sixth position, playing left field, number 14, Adam Wanowitz. Now batting in the seventh position and playing right field, number five, Tony Peters. And now batting in the ninth position and playing first base, Number 11, John McNamara. Well, you heard it right there from our now PA announcer. For Glenview, Leo Cefeli. Lead off batter, shortstop number 10, Gregory Willard. Willard up at the plate, and they throw the ball back to first base, holding back Rynell Bradley. As he has a short lead at first, Migelski brings it in for a strike. Here comes the throw. Not in time on the stolen base is Rynell Bradley. And this Barons team last year, we knew that they loved to steal and loved to run the bases. Well, they're going to run. That's the style that they have. I'm sure they're not going to deviate it. Score's not going to have a bearing because that's just their style. They're going to get out and run and play aggressive just like the low park senators have done they've gone out there and created and make that team throw the ball around right now bradley 11 of 16 on stolen bases smigelski fires a fastball right up the middle for the second strike on a swing as greg willard had a home run back in the first inning smigelski out of the stretch fires this one shot down the line oh, and it just misses our cameraman down the line once I think again. We're taking turns. Who do we get first? Is it Eddie? <laughs> He's going. Is that thing coming to me? Hi, Eddie. We're glad you're okay. We got Chris. We got the guy over at third. We only got one more guy to go. It's behind home plate. And he's been dodging a lot of bullets That's today. Right. 
Smigelski, this one pounded to Timmy Kinzel. Throws it over to first, they get him out, but Bradley goes over to third on the fielder's choice. Head coach, Mr. Rick Kinzel. 4-3 on the out. Again, yeah, we'd, we'd like to remind Adam, the, the viewers that are out, there's the one that escapes freedom. <laughs> there he is. And here's the one. That He's the lucky one. This is the lucky one. They've been giving us a great, great job, guys, all day. James Conway. And no protection behind the plate. Here comes the bunt to the plate. Smigelski picks it up, looks it over, throws it to first, gets the out, and the run is going to score on a great delay sacrifice bunt. So Washington picks up the RBI. Smigelski looked back. Fired it over, great throw to first base. But as soon as he threw, Rhino Bradley ended up scoring. Seven to two is our score. And on that replay, Adam, you'll notice Smigelski did not see the runner because he's relying on the catcher to tell him what to do. And Eddie came up and told him as soon as he fielded the ball, go to one. And it was a good call by the catcher. You've got a six run lead. You want to make sure you get the out. Absolutely. Smigelski comes in, fires, that one's low. 3-0 is the count for William Hubb, uh, who grounded out to the second baseman his first time out. Now Hubb showing bunt on a 3-0 count, and he's going to take a walk. Second walk given up in the inning by William, or by Daryl Smigelski in this third inning of play, run around first. And that brings up Nabir Abdurrahim. Hitting 500 coming into this ball game. Struck out his first time up. Runner on first. That is William Hub. Hub 21 of 21 on stolen bases. The ball is thrown and Kinzo picks it up at the second base slot. So Hub now 22 for 22 in stolen bases. Now when you watch that throw from the catcher, You'll see the catcher had his arm down. He had his elbow down, which means the ball's going to rise. He's always got to get his elbow up high if he's going to make that strong throw. Hub goes to third base very easily as it gets by Eddie Smigelski. And now Hub is on third base. Abdurrahim up at the plate. 7 to 2 is our score. 3-0 is the count as Smigelski now has had a hard time finding strikes. Abdurrahim on a 3-0 count. Ball four, first and third. That'll get a team back into a ball game when you start walking people. Three walks in a inning for Daryl Smigelski. He had eight walks all season in 34 innings pitched. Now the coach, Rick Kinzel now, now talking. Now pitching for Glenview, number three, Deshaun Curry. We always, uh, we always wonder what the coach says out there, you know? And Adam, I'll tell you what, I used to remember this. A lot of people would wonder, and I'd ask the guy, what'd you have for breakfast? Just to get his mind off the game, you know? And right now, I'm sure what Rick's trying to do is just calm him down. One, we got, listen, we got two outs, one out to go. Everybody used to think, man, what's he saying to that guy? You know, as a catcher, I used to go out there and just crack a joke. Yeah. You know, you just say, hey, ain't it a great day? Yeah. <laughs> take take the mind off the game for a few minutes. Get him back and composed and focused in the game. As the ball is uh, thrown inside for a ball, runner steals. So now we have second and third as Abdurrahim is at second base. Hub is at third. This one's grounded to Kinzel. He gets the high hop, throws it over to first, and it gets by the first baseman as they collide as two runs score as Mets could not hold on to the ball. It was a great play by Timmy Kinzel as the ball started to take off high. He jumped for it, but just made a bad throw over the, sec over the first base. So there you see the ball started to take off. Kinzel made a great play, but just short-armed it, and the first baseman just could not come up with the ball. Now you always tell your first step to where the ball's coming to you. See, he waited back on it, and that's why that happened. The other thing is when Kinzel made the throw, he didn't step to first base, Adam. He stepped toward right and tried to throw against his body. Oh, great pickoff move. They got him in a rundown. 
And they're going to get him back out as he was caught napping at second base. Great play by Daryl Smigelski as they had the pickoff move and they get the third out. But the Barons get three runs on no hits in this third inning, and they've cut down the lead to seven to four. I mean, when you when you look at key plays and killing rallies, picking off bases, Smigelski impresses me. You know, you're looking at. Gordon Park right here where the Big F City Championships for the city of Cleveland and obviously fall is here. Baseball may be over and you're sitting here, well, I want to really be a part of playing and in the baseball program next year. Who do I call? Well, you call the Cleveland Baseball Federation at 861-4767. Whether it's a volunteer that you want to become a coach or a sponsor that wants to help out, or maybe it's a child that wants to play in the baseball program. We have it for all ages, from T-ball all the way through adults. Again, it's the Cleveland Baseball Federation at 861-4767. And even though that falls here, I'm sure that everybody's thinking football. Cleveland Browns were one year away. A lot of the kids out here, whether they're from the ages of 8 to 14, can participate in the Munich football program. If you're interested in finding out what league or team is near your neighborhood, call 664-2322. And the girls are interested in playing volleyball. We're getting ready to start volleyball again. You can call 664-2325. We'll refer you to the closest recreation center in your neighborhood where the girls will have a fall volleyball program this fall. Adam, obviously, when you look at these teams that are playing out here today, I mean, Glenview really kind of has impressed me in the one that, hey, they were down by six and they came back and scrapped and got picked up three runs. Oh, absolutely. They, and they did it without getting a hit in that inning. It was a lot of walks in that inning. And uh, right now they're back into this game, only down seven to four. Inc. just showed us a great shot of Lake Erie and the beautiful day we have here at Gordon Park for the city of Cleveland Class F Championships. Now pitching for the Glenview Barons will be James Cowan. Cowan is the new pitcher, and Cowan, during the year, good utility pitcher, a left-hander, throws a curveball for a strike. Leading off the bottom of the third for Low Park, shortstop number two, Tony Minnett. Tony Minnett up at the plate. He walked his first time. Cowan has Minnett to foul it off. Seven to four is our score. Cowan, the left-hander, rocks and fires, throws it on the outside part of the plate. So now they went from the right-handing speed of Hub to the breaking ball of Cowan in this third inning. Holds off. 7-4 is our score as the minute looks. Here comes the pitch from Cowan on the outside part of the plate. 2-2 two and two is the count. And he walks. Coming up now for the fielder, Low Park Senators, Adam Wadowitz. Adam Wadowitz. St. Thomas Moore, seventh grader, honor roll. We've got to talk to this guy, favorite team, the Chicago Cubs, Derek Jeter. So we got to tell this guy we live in Cleveland. <laughs> Adam Wadowitz <laughs> up at the plate his first time up. As Minnett doesn't look anywhere, he's standing on first base. Coach Stoltz has got a good arm. He's good in the field. Stands up nice here at the plate. Minnett goes over. The throw is wide of the bag on the left side. He takes off for third easily. He's going to hold off on third base. 
as Wadowitz now has an RBI opportunity up at the plate as Shelby Gardner's throw was way left to the bag at second. There you see Cowan, the left-handed pitcher, brings it in for a strike. Seven to four is our score here in the bottom of the third inning. Cowan looks, brings it in for another ball. Full count. He's trying to keep the ball down. Again, uh, Ron Hubeny has done a good job behind the plate here. See what he's looking at through the mini cam. That one's in the dirt, gets by. Get an opportunity to see what he's been looking at all day. Again, our thanks to the CLV 3V35 crew. So Henry Picturn is right back Miller. there and coming up with Number some great five, creativity. Tony Got Dave and Eddie Malone. And there you see the look from the mass cam of the umpire. John and Matt and Chris and Adam. Who's the guy that got hit? That's the one I'm trying to really feel bad for. He's still standing, though. That looks good. Ron. Now there you see what, how it's looked if you were on top of that mask all the time, getting an upside-down view of Gordon Park. Now up to the plate is Robert Colley as Waterwitz walked. Col as Cowan looks, that one's inside, bit. Now we've got runners at second and third, Tim. And uh, way I'm looking, how many outs? We got nobody out here, right? Nobody out. Low Park has a great opportunity to try to widen the lead. This one's lifted into center field. Wind's going to keep that one in. It's caught. Here comes Minute to home. And the play at third up high slides in. He's safe as Wadowitz now heads home himself. And Wadowitz will score. And I think if Cowan did not cut off the ball, we may have had a play at the plate. Well, again, you always tell him you don't want to be in that line of fire. But the one thing that Greg McIntosh told me before the ball game was throwing the ball around. Now you're gonna see this throw right here. You see where the pitcher is? He's backed up almost on top of the catcher. Then he cuts it off and actually ends up throwing it into left field. Tyler Tapania is up at the plate. The left-hander walked his first time. Two runs score on that play. It is now nine to four, low park. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. And for Tapania, the center fielder, he walked and was stranded at first base. Nobody on base right now for a strike. So for Cowan, James Cowan out of Glenville has that one into the dirt and rattles the backdrop where our home plate camera is. There you see Tapania, and there you see Tim and I. Hey folks, welcome to Gordon Park. Cowan looks, fires for a strike. Yo. You always tell coaches, just let the players play and you'll be fine. And we're watching it right here today. Cowan has two strikes. Tries a breaking ball on the outside part and he walks him. And that's one of the things about when you, when you get kids at this age and they're young and they want to start throwing curveballs, a lot of times they'll throw them for the glove instead of throw them for inside so they break over for a strike. Jason Dillon now up to the plate as they throw back to try to hold up to Pena at first. Dillon, his second plate appearance. Outside part for a ball. Jason Dillon at 5'2", 100 pounds, hitting 270 on the year. Has a good eye on the plate and is also a very quick runner. James Cowan throws it in. This one's fouled behind. 
Bottom of the third inning here at Gordon Park, Class Big F Championship. The Low Park Senators leading it over the Glenview Black Barons, 9-4 Glenview. The defending champions. Last year they did it on William Hub's hit as Cowan throws back over the first base to Tristan Taylor. <laughs> Trying to hold to Pena somewhat close over at first base. To Pena walking off for the lead. Infield playing straight away. Here comes the pitch. And it is a strike on the outside part of the plate. Ball two strikes on the batter. Cowens throws. Gets him swinging for the strikeout. And first base occupied after Gardner could not hold on, so it is an out here in the third inning. Leon batter, second baseman. So Gardner Number strikes eight, out. Tim Kinzel. Tim Kinzel comes up. He hit a single his first time out and scored in that five run first inning. Low Park with two runs in this inning. Leading it nine to four. Kinzel, the second baseman, made some great defensive plays in this ball game. Looks outside and holds up. Good eye there, right there by Kinzel. You notice that, uh, Adam, he just, he just stayed right in there and watched it all the way to the catcher's glove. It's a good trait to learn as a hitter. If you're not going to swing, at least follow the ball all the way to the catcher's glove. Kind of teaches you to follow the ball. Another throw over to first is Glenview now trying to really keep those runners close at first base. Cowan, the left-hander, throws it into the dirt. Good pickup and stop by Shelby Gardner. Now, did you watch the way he looked down for a sign? Yeah, he did. 3-0, and oh, they hate looking down for that sign. They, they want to swing away. And he looks for a strike. He's probably telling his dad, I would have hit that one. <laughs> That's got to be the toughest thing, playing for your dad. Because you want to do so well. Here comes the pitch. Strike two, throw down to second base. Not in time. As Tapania gets the stolen base. Kenzo now with a three and two count. Full count with two outs. Man on second. Cowens throws. Swing and a miss. Strike three gets him swinging for the third out. For a low park and divide of the third inning of play, two runs. There was one man left on base and two. So there you see the pitch on the outside part that had Kinzel chasing for it for the third strike, and that stranded a man over at second base. But now the Glenview Barons behind their coaching staff right there, you see, trying to figure out, hey, we're, we scored some runs last inning. Well, let's see if we can do it as we head towards the top of the fourth inning here. At Gordon Park with the score, Low Park leading it nine to four. This Glenview team is still not out of it. No, absolutely not, Adam. I mean, they're the type of team that they're going to keep scoring runs, and I'm sure that the coach of Low is well aware of their potential to go out there and score some runs. The one thing going is if this young man that they have out there pitching now, if he can throw strikes, then we're in business. I'm looking at number nine from Low Park. It looks like Frank Bizarres. Uh, he comes in here with three and one record, 21 strikeouts, walk 10 in 30 innings with a 2.5 OER A. He is a merit roll student. Attention, He's also going to be a ninth now grader at Holy Name High School. And uh, one of the things Darryl is the Bagnoki. coach had a lot of confidence in the way now that he controls the game. So we'll see what kind of in play. Look at beautiful evening Number here. Two. On the east side of the city of Cleveland now, at Gordon Park. Park number nine, Frank A couple of changes defensively for the Low Park, for the low Park team. Nine, 
Frank Bezeris, as Tim was saying, is pitching. Daryl Smigelski moves over to third base or to shortstop. And Tony Minnett will go from shortstop to the third base position as they change up. And as we talked about this at the beginning of the ball game, you know, some teams they'll have that one stud pitcher and then they'll have a decent pitcher as your backup. But you look at Lowe, they've got four good pitchers on their roster. Absolutely. And and, and because of the pitching role where a guy can only pitch five innings, you're going to have to have two or three pitchers to win in this program. And again, that encourages people to come, you know, to develop players because that's what it's all about. Well, you look at it. Kinzel's a pitcher. He has a 2.96 ERA. Eddie Smigelski with a 2.71 ERA. Daryl Smigelski at 1.25. And now Frank Bezeris at 2.50. Uh, that is very good for this low park team. Really, those kind of pitching statistic is good for, for any team when you have four pitchers under a 3.0 ERA. When you see that, then you know up front that, hey, that's what it's really all about. If you can, if you can just go out there and throw strikes and keep the, keep the ball down, you're in good, good chance of you know, going out there and re really making a difference. Daryl Forrest is up at the plate. His first time out, he singled and was caught in a rundown as he takes it for a strike. And now joining us, the head honcho, the big cheese, the man that does it all for the Cleveland Baseball Federation. John Payton. John, first of all, you've got to feel great about it. You know, the weather out here today, as well as the, the parental support and the Baseball Federation's mission, is really seems like it's coming together. Oh, that's right. We've had great cooperation with City Hall, in particular you. and. You know, our CBF board has had a renaissance and the last two and a half years, them along with the partnership of the Indians, you know, our, as you know, our programs have expanded many a fold. John, what do you think, what do you attribute to the growth of the baseball program and what is it that you're most proud of over the last few years in the baseball program itself? Well, first of all, I just think the quality of play is getting better. I mean, you look at that little F game we just played just before and just an excellent ball game. This one here, a few errors, I think it's jitters, but I mean, the kids are attacking the ball, the pitchers are focused where to throw the ball. Uh, so I, I think that's the most important, that we've gotten stability in the coaching. And Tim and Adam, I think you both know that if you have good coaches, you're gonna have a good program. And I think now that the city volunteer coaches see a commitment by the CBF and the city to baseball, along with the support and success of the Indians, uh, it's just a winning combination. Here's a shot in the left field for a base hit. That should score Daryl Forrest as Tristan Taylor rips a rope. Here comes the play at the plate, not in time, as Tristan Taylor goes over to second after he rips a single and then advances over to second as the Glenview Black Barons now cut the lead to 7-5. to five. Reminds me of the days of Adam, Adam and Doze at Lowe Park, right? <laughs> not quite that hard, but uh, I, once in a while I'd get it out of the infield. <laughs> I just want to know, who was the better hitter, you at Low Park or Tim over at Brookside? You know, I think what we might have to find out as after this pitch, as the ball is thrown in, the steal, and he gets over to third base. You know, we have that Rookie League Championship, uh, the All-Star Game coming up. Maybe we should have a hitting contest between Tim and I. Absolutely. I'll take on Iron Mike any day. See, see who is the better hitter between Tim Wells and Adam Mendoza. I think that would be a treat that a lot of folks would like to see as the ball goes in and the man scores as now they're going to have a question about the ground rules that it went off the platform in the back and again i guess they're talking i don't know what they discussed in ground rules but i'm sure what rick's saying how could i get the ball it was up there and, and he's going to go down and talk to his partner and hopefully that was cleared up beforehand uh, now that's now, don't blame me for I'm this not, one, Adam. I'm not. <laughs> Aren't those the little idiosyncrasies you have when you play Sandlot baseball and the different ball diamonds throughout the city? Yeah, if you hit the tree stump, you know, it's still in play. Or Now they want to get the ground rules set up. Or if it hits the rock before second base. And it <laughs> I think what the umpires are saying, it was once it hit it, it was a dead ball, and they have to give the runners one base, and I think that's what they're explaining to both uh, coaches right now. And, and that would be fair because you don't want to, you don't want to get anybody hurt and stuff like that. And even though the platform is in the field of play, you, you basically would have to call it a dead ball situation. 
Kind of reminds me of my old days when I treated the blue with respect. Yeah, right. <laughs> you always respected the blue, Mr. Wells. <laughs> Uh, John, we've been talking about the boys playing baseball, but really uh, the CBF has extended out to the girls' softball program. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Well, again, it's a, again it's the partnership of the Indians, the city of Cleveland, and CBF. Uh, two years ago, the Indians came to us and said, hey, the city wants to start a softball program. We can't afford it completely. Would you come and assist us? And we all suggest we got together and uh, produced a program for the junior girls in the uh, spring, and we have the midget girls playing during the summer. And again, it, you know, it's progress through partnership. That's what it's all about. And as uh, long as you have a committed board of directors like we do with the CBF, and you've got committed and dedicated workers like yourself and Commissioner your Cox and his staff at the centers, um, it's a winning combination. And of course, you know, the Indians through Indians Charities helps fill some of the void. So again, it's just three partners coming together and the benefit of kids and the coaches that work with the kids. John, one last question. I know you have to go here. It's when you look at the viewers that are out here watching that may want to help, whether it's a volunteer coach, maybe they don't have the time to coach. Maybe it's somebody just out in the community who wants to help. How can they step forward and help with the Cleveland baseball program? Just look, look at this after this play here. Well, he is safe at third as he beats the throw, sliding under the tag. Now that's one of our first plays we've had here today that probably could have went either way. You at home make the call. Is he safe or is he out? Adam? He's safe if the tag went high. He beat the bag. And where the mistake is here, folks, at home, when you're coaching, you always tell your players to tag the bag. Don't tag the man. You put the glove down in front of the bag, you're going to have a guy out. Always an umpire will say, well, you tagged him high, his feet got in. If you tag the bag, you can always have the outcome. Watch how you, you'll reach here, and he'll actually reach out to tag the man. All he's got to do is drop the glove, the guy's out. In answer to your question, Tim, we're always looking for volunteer coaches, or we're looking for somebody who wants to volunteer to score keep, uh, help direct a park, and just call the Cleveland Baseball Federation at 216-861-4767. Before I go, Tim, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we really lost a great one in Chuck Rosansky this past spring. Uh, Chuck, I know it was dear to you. Chuck brought you up through the ranks, and Chuck also hired Eugene Duke, who you spoke to earlier over at uh, Lowe Park oh, when it was just better. one backstop there. And you know, I just hope that everyone who played for Chuck or knew Chuck once in a while just stops for a moment and say, thanks, Chuck, because we know right now he's probably up in heaven watching this ball game. Well, folks, stay, stay with us because uh, at the end of the program, there's a little video that the Cleveland Baseball Federation has put together that will show all the programs that are involved and how the Baseball Federation has made a difference. And again, if you want to help, whether it's sponsorship or coaching or going out and putting a clinic on, whatever it may be, give John a call at 861-4767. John, thanks for coming by. Thanks, you. And again, Adam and uh, Tim, thank you very much. You know, it's about our fourth time we've done this together, and uh, you guys make it happen. I mean, you guys make it a first-class broadcast, and ESPN's got nothing on you guys. And uh, <laughs> I will get I'll get the betting slips out on Monday to see who's going to hit the farther ball off the Rookie League pitching <laughs> machine. And... Uh, We'll get the toll. We'll get the polls going at City Hall Monday morning, Tim, and see. Uh, the challenge, the has, challenge been has been made, been made and uh, <laughs> we're going to see who's the winner, and you'll have to tune in next year to find out the results. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, thank you very much, John Payton of the Cleveland Baseball Federation. One of the nicest guys to talk to, and uh, always has some great things to say. And you know, he, he, you know, he talked about he hit it right on the head about the involvement. It, it takes a lot of people to get this thing going, and the sponsors and all that, and. Uh, Really, that is what's really made the baseball in the city of Cleveland and the amateur levels really continue to rise. And, you know, you talk about how many teams have come up to play and how they've expanded. Uh, you look at the adult programs, too, because as you go along in your age, you get to play in the Cleveland Adult Baseball League, and that has grown as well. So, really, from top to bottom, all through the leagues, all all has seen a, a growth in baseball. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, re-entering for Glenview, number 11, Darnell Washington. So now we have runners at... second and third. Here's the bunt to the third base side. Minute throws it away. And the run scores, and now we have second and third situation once again. As Glenview now. Chipping away. 
They caught him napping over at third base. They moved Tony over to third, and Tony was sitting back, thinking they're swinging away, and it was a great call by Greg McIntosh. The value of the bunt. The center fielder, number six, William Hub. William Hub now up to the plate. 0 for 1, he walked his second time out. Runners at second and third, as Frank Bezeris now finding himself in bit of a trouble as the Barons are now just down nine to seven. Runners at second and third. Washington is over at second base. And Woolard is at third. Bazaris now looking with that four seam fastball. This one's hit in the air to right field. The right fielder, Colley, couldn't come up with it. That was Anthony Peters. That'll score two, tie game. Rounding to third is William Hub, and he does it again. And that is five runs in the inning. For Glendie, the top of the fourth inning, and five run rule. Top of the fourth five inning, run five run runs hit. by the Glenview side. Barons. And the there you see it once nine. again. Nine, this looks like a familiar nine. scene. It was one year ago to right field. It drove in the big runs. But right now, we're tied here at the fourth inning mark. Folks, stay with us, because when we be back, it'll be the Low Park Senators up to bat. Four, four. And welcome back to Low Park here at Gordon Park as the Low Park Senators coming up to the plate in the bottom of the fourth inning. As Tim, we've got a brand new ball game. This game tied at nine. And once again, William Hub has done it again. Yeah, there, you talk about a big hitter. Well, he puts him back on the mound. Now he's got to be able to come back here and shut him down. Got to throw strikes. If you if you can go back out in low park and score again, it gives him life again. Smigelski fouls this one off. It's Smigelski, Eddie Smigelski, Daryl Smigelski, and Frank Belzars, the three, four, and, or two, three, and four hitters for the low park Senators. William Hub is back on the mound. This one's hit, diving by, and it gets by the shortstop and third baseman as Smigelski comes up with another hit. Now for the viewers at home, you might wonder, well, why did they take Hub out? Or why did they take out Daryl uh, Smigelski? Because of the five uh, inning rule. The Pitcher can only pitch five Number innings, six. we're playing six. Darryl so I think Smigelski. the coaches are thinking, let me get somebody in here to try to get through one inning, and I'm sure that we're probably gonna see both starting pitchers back in. So now Hub throws back as Smigelski gets back in time. Daryl Smigelski up at the plate, scored in his first timeout uh, after he walked, got on base a second time. This one's fouled on the right side, and it's picked up by Tristan Taylor as he really fought off the wind, a little bit of a breeze coming in, and snuck in, and he makes the catch. And again, on that play, Adam, he tried to pull an outside pitch. You always say, hit the ball where it's pitched. The pitcher, number nine, Frank Bazaris. Frank Bazaris takes the ball, Smigelski steals, and he gets easily over to second base as we are tied at nine in the fourth inning. Bazaris walked his first time up, struck out his second time. He has scored a run in the game. Smigelski at second. The ball's bounced over to the first baseman. Tristan Taylor gets it, tags over to first base, gets the out, but that moves over. Smigelski to third base with two outs in the inning. And that brings up... The third baseman, number two, Tony Minute. Tony Minute now coming up to the plate. Now you look here. You see right here the pitcher makes a mistake but gets away with it because the ball was hit to the first baseman. He should have been moving over to the right side. Now, I don't know if we have that replay again, but let me say this. Any time a ball's hit on the right side, the pitcher has to get over to first. Luckily, the first baseman was able to get back over. You'll see here, no pitcher in line. The second baseman, now here it's a race to the bag. 
They get away with one, but the pitcher has to get over there in case the first baseman can't get there. Tony Minna takes another ball. Tied at nine in the fourth inning. Runner at third. The pitch. This one's looped. Over the right field, over into right field. That'll score one and break the tie as Minute gets the RBI, and that gives Low Park a 10-9 lead on the RBI single by Tony Minute in the right field. As Schmigelski now scores for his third time there, he just went with the ball and just lofted and found lots of green just in front of the right fielder as Adam Wadowitz now checking into the plate. As Minute now goes the second on the steal. Now on that, that play there, Adam, for Low Park. number two James from Max. the Senators, Tony Minute. he did not three. steal that base on the catcher. The pitcher's got to have a responsibility to keep those guys close. Otherwise, the catcher will never have a chance. This one's hit down the line inside the back fair. That'll score one. As James Metz, who re-entered the ball game, gets the base hit. And the RBI. As it is now an 11 to nine game. Look here, folks. Now see how he stays down on it and tries to go the other way. A great job of hitting right here by this young man because he went with the pitch. One of the things you're gonna see about championship play at this level is when the players can understand that the ball that's away from you, just try to go with it. Don't try to pull it. You'll see most successful teams that can hit the ball to the opposite field, they're the teams that are gonna have great hitting ball clubs. Go with the pitch, number one rule, as Metz steals second. And uh, the hit by Anthony Peters is gonna get by, nobody at first base. Now you see where, see what I was talking about earlier? that when the ball's hit on the right side, that pitcher has to get over. In that case, both the, the first baseman and the second baseman had gone for the ball. Now watch Hub here. He'll throw the ball, and you'll see the ball go to the other side. Now when this young man comes down, we should be able to pick up that pitcher. And you're gonna see that the pitcher never comes over. See where he's standing back there? He should be over here at first base being able to cover. Second and third for the Low Park Senators. They have regained the lead in the bottom of the fourth, 11 to nine. Tyler Tapania, the seventh grader out of St. Leo's up at the plate, two walks in the ball game. Second and third, as William Hub delivers. This one is a line shot into the gap, into left field. That'll score one. Here comes a second run. And it's a two-run single or a double now as they get him out at second as he tries to stretch it out. But the two-run score for the Low Park Senators, and they now lead it 13-9 on a great base hit. But then he got caught trying to get a little bit extra. A great play on the defensive side of the ball. Now you're going to watch here. This guy's going to go with the pitch, and he's going to drive it for a base hit. Now if we can stay with it right here, you're going to see this left fielder pick up the ball. He's going to look for the cutoff guy. This is what kills the big innings. If that guy can hit the cutoff man, you're going to see this time he hits it, throws it to the pitcher. We don't see it on your screen, but the pitcher cuts it off and throws the second base, kills the big inning. Hitting cutoff man prevents the opponents from scoring a lot of runs in one inning, and that's a great play by the Glenview team. That could, if he would have stayed at first, you'd, you'd get that extra run in there, but now the great defensive play by Glenview shuts down the Low Park Senators when they were getting four runs this inning. That could have, uh, they could have easily gotten five. So now, as we head towards the top of the fifth inning, Darryl Smigelski now will come back to the pitcher's mound and throw for the Low Park Senators as they have a 13 to nine lead as the sun begins to set over the skies of Lake Erie and Gordon Park here in Cleveland, Ohio for this Big F championship. Now when you're coaching and you're sitting on the defensive side first, let's talk from the Low Park side. You have to think in terms of outs. Rick Kinzel's gotta be thinking, look, I gotta get six outs out of this pitcher. It's cooled down now. I need two innings out of my best pitcher. If he can throw strikes, then we're going to have this thing wrapped up. On the other side, Glenview's got to be able to put the ball in play. 
they got to realize that, hey, I can hit this guy. Let me go up here and get my swings and make some things happen. Well, like you said, Tim, Low Park has six outs for a championship, but don't count this. Glenview Barons team, they have come back before, and they did it last year in the championship game here that you saw on CLV TV 35. So this one is still not over with as we head towards the top of the fifth inning, and it will be William Hub, Nabir Abdurrahim, and uh, Daryl Washington hitting for the Glenview Black Barons. Daryl Smigelski, who came back into the ball game right now. Leading off the top of the fifth inning for Glenview, third baseman, number 13. I'll make that not appear. Abdurrahim. Abdurrahim will start off in this fifth inning. Big power hitter, solid hitter too. Had two big hits in their last playoff game. See if he can get something started right here. That one got a piece of, I believe, the catcher or the umpire that time. Now on that swing, you saw he, he, with his lead foot, he stepped toward third and he turned his head. He's trying to yank the ball. And Smigelski will be smart here if he can keep the ball away. Because if he gets the ball inside, this young man can really take it a long way. You can see this here. See that lead foot step out? So he pulled out there at him. And he got him swinging. Big strike out there by Smigelski. I think we're going to have to give the home plate umpire a little bit of time. He got nipped on that last foul ball. The right fielder, number three, Deshaun Curry. So a big strikeout for Smigelski as he gets Abdurrahim swinging. Now Deshaun Curry up to the plate. His first at bat in the ball game. Fouls this one off. Did he get hit again? I think that's the second one in this inning. I'm wondering if we can get another shot from the from the old mask cam to see if that one went off the face mask. Did that, did that guy get hit again? That'd be twice in one inning. Oh, let's see it here. That one's on the outside part of the plate for a ball. I don't know if we have it on the replay on that last one that foul tipped back. But I think our, our umpire has just been hit twice in this inning and that will take a toll on you. Big swing there. By Curry, another strikeout. Two strikeouts for Smigelski in this fifth inning. And that brings up Daryl Forrest to the plate. Second baseman, number 14, Daryl Forrest. There you saw on the swing by Curry, his head was looking way down the line. Inside part of the plate. 13 to 9 is our score. Low Park with the lead in the fifth inning. Another strike. Now I saw that guy put down a one, which to me, I thought was fastball. It sure didn't look like a fastball to me. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You know, when you have a brother combination like Daryl and Eddie Smigelski as your pitcher and catcher combination, you know they're going to be working every day. It's like, hey, you want to toss the ball? Let's go in the backyard. Absolutely. I'll work on it. And each can throw for each other because both of them are pitchers on this team. I'm just wondering if mom or dad are here, and I'm sure they are. They're probably sitting on pins and needles. Absolutely. This one has popped up. Smigelski calling for it, and he makes the catch. So the Low Park Senators right now are just three outs away from a championship. But Big. don't count out the Glenview Black Barons. We'll take a look at it here again. You're going to see this pitch. It's going to be coming. And you see how he drops his hands, doesn't get on top of the ball. That's called a top hand that needs to come around. But right now you're going to see two-handed catch. Good job. Big inning. One inning that Rick Kinzel was really hoping for was three up, three down. They come back in here in the bottom of the five, leading 13 to nine. Low Park, three outs away from capturing their first city championship. And they're going to look to try to add some more runs to it. Right now in the bottom of the fifth inning, they will have John McNamara coming up to the plate. McNamara out of St. Leo's will be the first batter up. And Tim, as the sun begins to go down here at Gordon Park and the wind uh, starts to come off the lake, it is a bit cooler. But uh, it is really heating up 
out on the field between these two teams. A very good ball game. It looked as though as Low Park was just going to blow the game wide open up at the beginning, but then Glenview has come back to tie the game at nine. But a big fourth inning or a big fourth inning for Low gave them gave them a 13 to nine lead, and now three outs away from a championship possibly after this at bat. You know, one of the things at this level is. It's just like uh, in basketball where you tell somebody, I want to go shoot a basketball. They'll do that, but they don't want to play defense. In football, a guy wants to pass, he wants to catch the ball, but he doesn't want to block. Don't want to. In baseball, everybody loves to hit. Oh, absolutely. But when you talk about playing defense, that's the difference between good teams and average teams. If they can, the team that's going to play great defense is the team that usually will advance on to being great ball, ball clubs. And that's the thing, that right now, They've got their last opportunity to get some more runs, but they've got to go out on the field and really clamp down and uh, really shut down the Glenview Barons. But right now, it'll be real interesting to see what's going to happen to this Glenview team as they come down. Is it going to be a total fall apart, or are they going to come back, get them down one, two, three, and use the sticks? I think this is going to be the key point to the game. William Hub's got to come out here and put these guys down without giving up a run. If he gives up a run, it really could really bust the morale of the Glenview Black Barons. But as Greg McIntosh has said all year long, we've been coming from behind in every game. We can come back here and do it again. John McNamara coming up to the plate his first time up. 310 hitter, also a pitcher if need be. As he looks for a ball inside. William Hub back on the mound. 3-0 the count for McNamara. 13-9 Low Park with the lead. Inside pitch, he's going to take a walk. And that is the last thing that William Hub wanted to do is walk the first batter of the evening. And, he, and, and he, <laughs> McNamara is real happy. Hey, I got on base. Yeah. <laughs> that really helps the on-base percentage as the ball goes way on the outside part of the plate. And McNamara napping over at first base should have moved over to second on the pass ball. Well, he's, he was so happy to get over there. I think he didn't even realize the pitch was being thrown. Tim Kinzel up at the plate now. Takes one for a strike. Kinzel in the ball game, singled and scored in the first, struck out in the third. Takes a pitch for a ball. William Hub, rocks and fires, swung and a miss. One ball and two strikes on Kinzel. See, Dad tell him that's not your pitch. That ain't the one you wanted. On the outside part of the plate as McNamara still holds at first. Three and one is the count. On Tim Kinzel, the second baseman. This one's high. Gets by the catcher. And McNamara will go over to second base on the pass ball. Adam, I think it's that everything, the ball's been up there. The ball's hit up there. He's and it hit the it. left to right. <laughs> but I don't see him get hit yet. Cameraman has not been hit yet behind the plate. Foul tip and a good hang on there by Shelby Gardner as he hangs on for the foul tip third strike. Or make that Jamal Edwards who's behind the plate now. The catcher, number one, Ed Smigelski. Ed Smigelski now coming up to the plate. Low in the dirt for a ball. Smigelski, two singles, two for two, and he scored three times in this ball game. This one is a grounder. The third baseman, Abdur Rahim, gets it, throws it over easily to the first baseman, and they get the out over to Tristan Taylor. So Smigelski grounds out. And that moves over McNamara to third base. And that brings up the other Smigelski, Daryl Smigelski. The pitcher, number six, Daryl Smigelski. So Daryl Smigelski has scored once and is one for two in this ball game. William Hub trying to get out of the inning without giving up any runs. Big cut there. 
by the young Daryl Smigelski out of Our Lady of Good Counsel Grade School. All he wants to do here is put the ball in play. That one going up into the net behind us. What's impressed me here is he, he got the first guy on and he's really bared down and thrown strikes. I, re I think he really realizes the importance of making sure this runner doesn't score. This one's lofted into left center field. Washington is there. They almost collide. They do, and they get the out. And that could have been big trouble if that ball would have dropped. So no runs. No runs for the Low Park Senators as we head towards the top of the sixth inning. As you see Smigelski's pop up into the outfield. And the Low Park Senators right now are three outs away from a city championship. And they will have to face Tristan Taylor, Shelby Gardner, and Charlie Cunningham. That is the order for McIntosh's Black, Black Barons as they are getting a pep talk in this sixth inning as they find themselves down 13 to nine. We've seen this team come back in last year's championship. Let's see if the magic is there for them again. They have come back from many games this year. And is this another one? The drama will start to unfold in just a few minutes. As the sun uh, setting into the background over the Lake Erie, the lights are on here at Gordon Park. It's been a beautiful day for baseball. And uh, great competition here in the Class F championships. And what would a day of watching baseball be without my buddy Tim Wells here, <laughs> you know? He takes a lot of guff from me and the rest of the crew from CLV TV 35. And the challenge has been made against Iron Mike for the Rookie League before. We're going to have a hitting contest between Tim and I. Oh, yeah. You know, I shouldn't tell this because we're on the air. But I have to because it's, we're really having a lot of fun tonight. Uh, one time, you know, we take the kids to Joggle Lake every year. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the guys that worked on the playgrounds played ball for me years ago. And you know how they pitch in those pitching machines where they put up your, you know, how fast you throw. Right. So he had like 75 or 80 miles per hour. So I went over and gave the guy, I gave you five bucks if you put Tim Wells and he threw 90 miles per hour. <laughs> and of course he did. And they came over, how much did he pay you to put it up? You know. <laughs> so in other words, I'm going to win the hitting contest yeah. very easily. <laughs> I watch me strike out all the time. <laughs> but I will bring my bat. I have my bat with me. Never leave home without it. My 32-inch, 28-ounce Easton bat. It has done me proud. So you watch out, Tim. The challenge has been made. I hear you. Well, as we head towards the sixth inning, Smigelski getting a strike as he faces Tristan Taylor, the first baseman. The Low Park Senators, three outs away from a city championship. Smigelski gets a strike on that one right up the middle as he really is digging down deep and throwing hard fastballs. Smigelski looks in for the sign. He throws that one's high and inside. Smigelski looking once again to Tristan Taylor. This one's popped up in the center field. And it is caught by Daniel Stanley. One out, two outs for a city championship. And that was Tyler Tapania, seventh grader from St. Leo. Now this time you see how he drops his hand, gets a little under the ball. But look at Ty uh, Tapania, Tyler walking in here. He comes in, two-handed catch, good fundamentals. Ground ball gets by the first baseman into the outfield as Shelby Gardner gets the base hit. One out and a man on first. Can Glenview have the magic of 97 come back once again here in 98? Rynell Bradley re-entering the ball game and hitting the right fielder with a runner at first. No, they won't hold him. They'll let him run. He'll get over the second base. We have one out in the sixth. 
Low Park up 13 to nine. Taylor is at second base. Smigelski fires it inside. Here comes the steal. Here comes the throw. And do they have him? Yes, they do. They get him on the high tag, and he is out at third. And what a play. I mean, you're down. You want to be aggressive. That's been their style all year. But you at home, let's make the call here. You're going to see steps behind. Good fundamentals by Eddie Smigelski. Is this guy safe or out? You at home make the call. And we got the peanut gallery behind us taking a look at the monitor. But you're down four with one out. That run doesn't mean anything. You know, but you know, if he makes it, hey, you're a hero, he doesn't. One more time. Dad, mom, what do you think? You be the call. Safe for out. There's the glove, there's the foot. Did the foot get there before this tag? Truck stop, number 10, Gregory Warner. But fortunately, we have a replay. He's got a bing bang play out in the field. They're one out away, Adam. Here comes the throw, and they get him for the championship. Oh, they catch him stealing, oh, then they win the championship. A great throw by Young Smogelski gets Gardner or gets Bradley out at second. And what a way to end the ball game as the Low Park Senators win this one 13 to nine. And a wild one here at Gordon Park. And it ends on a caught stealing at second base. As the Low Park Senators are your big F champions for the 1998 Class F championship season. Well, folks, stay with us, because when we come back, we're going to meet the 1998 city champions from the Low Park Senators. And welcome back to Gordon Park. Adam Mendoza along with Tim Wells and the Low Park Senators, the champions of the Big F Championship game here at Gordon Park. Tim, it's been a great championship day. Absolutely. You know, as we talked all day long, it was two outstanding teams that were squaring off. We had the defending champs, and we came in here with a team that we thought was pretty young. And all game we talked about hitting, but as you know and I know, and everybody that watched this ball game, it came really down to defense and catching the ball. Absolutely. It came down to a final play with two outs. Runner steals, runner throws, is, is thrown out at second base, and here are some of the people that are involved in that last play, especially. Gonna, let's ask Eddie, how did you do that, Eddie? Got up and threw it. And who second. made the tag? I did. What's your name? Anthony Minute. Took you one minute, you laid it down, and city champs. How did it, it feel, guys? Good. Good. Great. Felt like they drink a minute made juice. <laughs> now, Coach, uh, this is, uh, this has to be a really great moment for you and uh, for Low Park, you know, and O-Ball, the coming back with a city championship. Very much so. I mean, I grew up playing baseball, so I know what a thrill it is for these young men. They're gonna, I told them before they're going to remember it. The rest of their lives, win or lose, they're just going to have a little better memory of it today because of how they played. And that is one thing that these kids will remember this day for a long time and also for the parents that come home city champions in, in 1998. Yeah, and also we'd like them to know that we are very proud of what you've done. They'll be honored later this month by Mayor Michael R. White at City, Hall, city Hall's Rotunda, as all city champions will be honored by the mayor as receiving their city championship trophies. But for Rick Kinzel and the, the group that played here today, they put on a great show. When we looked at some of those running plays, talked to Rick before the game, I said, you know they like to run, how are we going to stop him? He says, I got a catcher that can do it. And he, it came in the last inning when we thought there were three outs away. It was two big outs. Well, this game was almost a blowout at the beginning, but Glenview came back and tied the game at nine. But then with four runs in the fifth inning, here comes Low Park coming back with a 13-9 win, a big win. And I have to feel pretty good myself because when I grew up, I used to play over at Low Park. So I feel a little bit better that a city champion has come out of Low Park. You know, and obviously one of the people we'd be remiss is Daryl Smigulski. He really came in and pitched with a lot of heart and poise. And you saw that the plays that they made were they were good fundamental plays, which goes back to coaching and teaching the fundamentals. And we'd be remiss, Adam, if we didn't take time out, not just to thank 
Rick Kinzel and Mr. Topney and the people with this team, but the many coaches that throughout the year took time out to teach the kids the fundamentals. Not just about baseball, but about life, about doing what's right, about getting an education, coming out here and being respectful and playing hard and walking away as true sports. And also you got to give a lot of credit to the parents that come out and support their kids and a lot of them here watching the game and really they're all going to feel pretty good after this one as uh, the Low Park Centers come back home with a city championship. We'd like to close out by thanking the Cleveland Baseball Federation as well as the many sponsors that went out and donated to the teams this year to give them nice first class uniforms as well as our Cleveland Indians and the City of Cleveland Division of Recreation, as well as you, Adam Mendoza, for coming out. It was a great night of baseball here at Gordon Park. We'll walk away with 1998 city champions, the Low Park Senators, but there's many champions more than what we see here today, and we would really like to thank those many volunteers, the many sponsors, and the people behind the scenes that made this work, as well as when we close out, stay with us, because we're gonna take a look at a video that the Cleveland Baseball Federation put together of all the sports programs that were offered this summer where kids got the opportunity to play baseball free of charge. We also want to thank our crew. They dodged all the foul balls. One guy got hit out of five cameramen. That's not too bad. No, that is not bad when they're all in the field of play. So for Tim Wells, I'm Adam Mendoza. And here are your 1998 city champions in the Class F League, the Low Park Senators. And once again, Tim, it's been a great job. And we'll see you next time right here on CLV TV 35. Have a good night, everybody. We hope you enjoyed today's game. Make sure you head over to our YouTube channel, TV20 Cleveland, and subscribe to get the latest videos. I'm Christian Patterson. Thanks for watching TV20 Classic Sports.